always um, trying to remember to start off by acknowledging those of you who join us on YouTube, who look for our teachings, and I thank you so much for your prayers and your comments. They a word of encouragement to build each other up. That's what we're supposed to do. We're all supposed to use our voice to build each other up and to encourage each other because right now we are the light and the salt of the earth and the enemy is trying to do everything to put our lights out. And you're going to hear me say this often because I think this is where we are now that the enemy is using technology, science, education, finances, food, every every aspect of, of life is being manipulated and controlled by the kingdom of darkness. The scripture says Satan is the god of this world. He's the god of this world system. And we have not understood it to the fullest, the, the, the depth of the enemy's manipulation and control over our lives. And we've been taught, even through, especially through the religious systems, um, lies and deception. And now it's to the point where everything has been moved. Uh, uh, so we've been socially engineered and hypnotized and a spell has been cast on humanity to move us away from any belief in the Creator God. And so what I'm trying what I'm going to try to do today is encourage you to pray more often. Not just say some words, but really pray. And I've been saying for months how important it is for us to continuously can examine our hearts. So I want to start in Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. My teachings is usually um, like a Bible study. I like to give you a lot of scriptures so that you will know the address of the scriptures. And what I say is not usually my opinion, but it's, it's scriptures so that you would know the scriptures for yourselves. And don't rely on me. And I, I continue to say this too because I think it's important. The enemy has used his ministers to deceive people so and, and, to, and to train people to depend on a man instead of teaching us to rely on the Most High for guidance, for instructions. We each have the opportunity to have a relationship with the Most High through His Holy Spirit that, that would be able to teach us, lead us, and guide us into all truth. So what has happened is if, there's a couple of scriptures I'm going to show you. One is in um, Philemon or Philemon, and one is in 2 John, where the people had house churches. The first century church was, was in houses. The New Testament um, letters were written, they were epistles or letters written to individuals who had ministries in their homes. So you have now, what the enemy has done over the years is raised up what we know as, as mega churches. And the mega churches, to me, this is my opinion, what I'm about to say, the mega churches were Satan's churches. And what they were do, doing is teaching people how to walk in the flesh. The scripture in Romans 8 says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So the mega churches train people how to operate in the flesh, cater to the flesh, do as you will, do whatever you please, because we are under grace and you can just say you, you, you sorry for what you did. But I want to encourage you today to understand that when you say to someone, I'm sorry for what I've done to you when it's wrong, that that means that you genuinely understand that you have committed a wrong and it grieves and hurt or breaks your heart that you 
hurt someone or you wrong someone to the point where you don't want to do anything like that again. That's what repenting, repentance means is that I recognize I did something wrong and I don't want to be guilty of doing that again because I understand the pain um, that I caused in doing that wrong. When we say we repent to God, that means we understand we violated His spiritual laws. And when you realize that you've violated the most high spiritual laws, you feel a grief in your heart. And you don't want to be guilty of doing that again because you love the Creator God. You understand that life is a gift. That every day you get the breath of life. You, you're grateful that you are alive. You can wake up today and say you are alive and you're in your right mind. And you recognize and understand that you are alive and you have the breath of life and you're in your right mind because it's a gift from the Most High. That's how you, you enter into a relationship with Him. You recognize every day the things He graced you with and you're grateful for those things and you want to honor Him and bless Him and you don't want to do anything that's going to grieve Him. The scripture says, do not grieve or quench the Holy Spirit because if you continue to grieve or quench the Holy Spirit, then you become hardened to the Holy Spirit where you, you, you're not able to recognize when He's speaking to you. And that's really, really important. And you heard me say, I believe it was last week, how important it is to have a close walk with the, with the Holy Spirit so that when He said, don't go to the left or don't go to the right or don't move, you're sensitive to His Spirit, His voice, because you've been living a life on purpose to try to be pleasing to the Spirit, not pleasing to your flesh. That's what Romans 8 means when it says, um, there is now no condemnation. The enemy wants you to be condemned and he wants you to do things and say things that are going to grieve the Holy Spirit and disconnect you from the Creator. And everything now I see in our life, in our life is intended to cause us to be disconnected from the, the Creator God. You're so busy with all of the devices, the smartphones, the smart TVs, the smart electrical meters, Everything is surveilling and monitoring and engineering us to believe really that we are gods. And so instead of us understanding that there's only one creator God and we're supposed to be grateful to him and bow down to him, the enemy through the mega churches and the pastors of the mega churches are the influencers that's influencing us to do Satan's agenda for our lives. Am I making sense to you? Okay, so in Hebrews chapter 13, and this is important, verse 5, it says, Let your conversation or your life be without covetousness, and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will, this is what I brought you to this scripture, because I want you to underline, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So God is faithful to keep his word, to keep his promises. So no matter what is going on, no matter what we see, no matter what we hear, God is saying, the Most High is saying, he'll never leave us, he'll never forsake us. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. And remember those of you who stumble upon this video on YouTube that this I don't make videos to just post on YouTube that I have a small ministry in my home and I have people who I'm talking to in my home primarily but I'm grateful and honored for those of you who follow us on a regular basis on YouTube so Sometimes I, I'm saying that because I have to go sometimes slow than, than normal so that the people who I'm talking to directly are able to keep up with me at the time that I'm doing the teaching. In Matthew 28 and verse 20, this would be Christ speaking. And in verse 20 it says, Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I, Christ, have commanded you, but this is what I want you to see. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world or even unto the end of this age. Because we're at a point now where the enemy is trying to make a, an aggressive move to 
destroy God's creation. And the Lord doesn't want you to feel worried or be anxious or be afraid. And I also want to say that there's no place that I can think of or see on this earth where you can go and be safe. Because the enemy, the scripture already told us that Satan is the God of this world. The whole world. He's the God of this whole world. And we can see that there's things happening all over the world that, that is evil. But also... The enemy is not able to do anything. Satan is the god of this world, but our creator is the, is the creator of the world. And the world belongs to him. He allows the enemy to do certain things that's going to work towards his agenda. For example, Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery, into Egypt. But... God had already given Joseph a dream that his family was going to bow down to him, but they didn't understand that what the Lord was revealing to Joseph was that there was going to be a time when the Lord was going to use Joseph to save his family. So in order for him to get into that place, evil had to take place to Joseph. He had to go into prison. He had to be accused for things he didn't do. But that all was part of God's plan. So even though we see evil advancing in all of the systems and the corporations and all of the things is, um, through their logos and everything, you can clearly see that they're honoring Satan. But God is allowing it to happen for God's reason. Even the mega churches that he allowed to raise up was for his reason. And I believe that they are closed down now for his reasons to give people the opportunity to find out the truth. Because what was happening in those mega churches is not paying honor to the Most High God. Okay, am I making sense? So I wanted you to see that don't be anxious, don't get afraid, don't worry. There's no place you can run to hide except in Christ. So what we need to do is do what Christ says because he says to occupy until he returns. So understanding that we are his light, we are his people. Wherever we are, we're supposed to pray without ceasing. And let's turn to James. James chapter 5. Let me give you the definition of fervent. Fervent means having or showing great emotion or zeal. Extremely hot, glowing, burning. A fervent plea, a heated plea. That's why you hear people say, you got to have your fire burning in prayer. The harder you pray, the more you pray, the more you, you can cause a change. Because when you speak, when you pray, that's you communicating with the Most High. When you speak, your words have power. So you got to be able to speak the word. Speak God's word. Remind Him of His word. The effectual, let's read in verse... 16, it says of chapter 5 of James, it says, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer, the heated prayer, the heartfelt prayers are of a righteous man avails much or woman. The heartfelt prayers, the heated prayers, not just something you just speaking, you know, you don't, you just speaking in your heart, you speaking with your words. But your heart is not on the, on, on the most high. That's part of having the relationship with him. You can't be lukewarm. You can't be straddling the fence. You got to care for one another. You got to really pray with the heart. Lord, my heart is in this. I honor you. Most times if you're in a heated prayer, tears will usually start falling down your face uncontrollably. It's not because... You're doing it, that's because your heart now is in sync with the Spirit. Am I making sense? Let's go to 2 Chronicles. And everybody knows these verses of Scripture, but I pray that they'll take on a different meaning to you today. 
God has us alive at this particular time in history to represent him. We are not here by happenstance, and we are not moving through space at a thousand miles an hour and the sun being 93 million miles away. That's just kind of stupid things they taught us in school. But when your mind is open to the Most High and He's revealing things to us in this period of time, we realize that everything we were taught, if the sun was 93 million miles away, you wouldn't be able to see it. But the enemy is doing that so that we wouldn't understand how powerful the Most High is, how much He loves us, how that He is always near us, that He will never leave us nor forsake us, that He's always close to us, so that He hears our prayers. And our prayers have power to change things, to move things. But if you believe that the sun is 93 miles away from, 93 million miles away from you, and that you are moving a thousand miles through space, you become insignificant in your own mind, which is a, which is the strategy of the enemy to cause us to not take it serious, the assignment that God has in, in giving us life. He's given us life. He's purposed and chosen us to be alive at this particular time in history that we would worship him, that we would seek his face, that we would seek his heart, that we would live holy, that we would not make excuses or justify when we commit sin, that we wouldn't have a desire to commit sin. Because the scripture says, when our ways please the Most High, he make our enemies to be at peace with us. But the enemy of God is trying to destroy his creation and he's never going to be at peace with us. And we need to understand that and we need to fight. We don't need to fight each other. We need to fight against principalities, powers and rulers and spiritual wickedness in high places. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. I'm sorry, Chronicles chapter 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. It doesn't say if heathens or if devil worshipers would pray. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. You can, seeking means I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look until I find it. So you got to be seeking the Most High through His Word, through praying, through all the things that He's instructed us to do. Lord, I honor you. I praise you. I magnify you. I worship you. You are King of kings and Lord of lords, omnipotent Father, creator of all things. And you just got to be fervent about it. Okay? It says, I pray and seek my face and turn. Turn. Repent. Repent means to go back to being the way it used to be. Turn from their wicked ways. Because ways of God's people today is pretty wicked. And we need to examine ourselves. It says, then will, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. The land needs healing. There's storms and hurricanes and earthquakes and volcanic eruptions and birds dying and fish dying in the sea. And all of these things the Lord said was going to happen. But it doesn't say don't pray. I mean, I understand there's a time when the scripture in Jeremiah told, the Lord told Jeremiah not to pray for the people. But the Lord is telling us in James that our prayers can avail. And if you understand that there's no place where we can go to be safe from the, from the evil, then it's on us to pray for where we are. Pray. Pray God's will into the earth. Pray for forgiveness for our sins. Pray because God says he doesn't want anyone to perish. But when people don't respond to you the way you think that they should respond, because the scripture says some plant, some water, but only God can give the increase. Don't lose heart. Just keep praying. As long as we have breath, we should continue to pray. But let's turn to 1 Corinthians Chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I'm going to read most of this um, chapter. 
It says in, there, in verse 1, chapter um, 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it says, I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. I didn't come to you with my own knowledge or wisdom. I came to you with the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you. That should be the testimony of those who is representing God. We should be pointing you towards Him, not towards any wisdom or I'm smart or I'm better or I'm got anything more going on with me greater than you. It says, For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. You see, this we need to go back to this. But in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and of power. Because no matter how smart you are, if you don't have the Holy Spirit working through you, you're not going to be able to achieve or accomplish anything of any value. Okay? It says that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of the Most High. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the prince of this world that come to naught. See, the wisdom of the prince of this world has no power. It's going to end with nothing, no benefits. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known that they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, this is what we need to take into our hearts deeply. I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared, hallelujah, for them that love him. There's things that God has prepared for the people who love him that we are not able to comprehend or understand. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit, the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that is able to help those who believe, who is sanctified and separated and who's not walking after the flesh but after the spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yea, the deep things of God. For what man knows, the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him, even so the things of God knows no man but the spirit of God. I had someone share with me how they had talked for hours to different people who they cared about, how important it is to be careful how you take a particular thing into your flesh, if you know what I'm saying. And the people who the person spoke to said, yeah, they understood what she was saying and they went right on and did what they said they understood not to do. And so this scripture, when I was speaking to the person, came to my heart because it says, I'm going to read verse 11 again, it says, For what man knows the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him, even so the things of God knows no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. Those of us who have a relationship with God, we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which, of, which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man, see, if you're not in Christ, if you not have a relationship with the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit is in you, the natural man receives not the things of the Holy Spirit of God, for they are foolishness. You see, the enemy have people so brainwashed that you, if you're not in a relationship with the Most High, you're not able to discern spiritual things. So it says in verse 14, The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. 
neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. If you belong to Christ, it says in um, Corinthians chapter 5, then you, you have the mind of Christ. You belong to him. You see, if you don't have the mind of Christ, you're not going to be able to discern spiritual things. So spiritual things would be foolishness to those who don't have the mind of Christ. Those who don't have the spirit of Christ. And that's what we see taking place all over the world. People buying in to the influencers. The influencers are able to influence people to receive and, 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 and walk in the way of the Antichrist and the Antichrist's agenda for humanity. And I pray that I'm making sense to you today. So the scriptures that I was going to share with you, let's turn to Philemon. Philemon is next to Titus. <clears throat> Titus, Timothy. Philemon chapter 1. It's only one chapter. <laughs> but I just want to show you this. Verse 1. It says, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, Unto Philemon, our daily beloved and fellow laborer, and to our beloved Aphia and Acripius, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. The church was in, in his house or her house because he was naming each of these individual people. And Aphia is a female. One translation says, my beloved sister Athea. Now let's turn to 2 John. <clears throat> it wasn't a mega church he was writing to. He was writing to a person who had their ministry in a house. Now let's, 2 John verse 1, we're going to read most, we're going to read a good bit of this chapter, or maybe all of it. It says, the elder unto the elect lady, so he was writing to a lady, and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. For the truth's sake, which dwells in us, and shall be with us forever. Remember in first, um, John chapter 1, it says, the truth is Christ. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love that we walk after the commandment this is this is the commandment that as you have heard from the beginning you should walk in it for many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh this is a deceiver and antichrist look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresses and abides not in the doctrine of Christ has not God. He that abides in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. If this, I brought you, said all of that to bring you to this verse. It says, if there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house. Don't let them come into your house. It's a lady he's talking to. She's somebody who teaches her children. She has a ministry. It says, neither bid him God's speed. For he that bids him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. 
You see, if you believe the scriptures are God breathed, this is telling you not to allow anyone who doesn't believe in Christ as the Son of God into your house or into the house of the person whose ministry he was writing this letter to. Am I making sense? Let's turn to Revelation. Revelation chapter 3. Chapter 3. So I, the Lord does not want us to be afraid. He has us alive at this particular time in history that we would pray and we would pray his will into the earth. And that we would be in relationship with him to know what his will is. We know that he wants us to be set apart or sanctified. He wants us to be holy as he is holy. He wants us to love each other, encourage each other, build each other up. To not allow fear to take control over us. Because we are the antidote for the evil that we see is taking place in the earth. Because we are the temple of God. He lives on the inside of us. He said he would never leave us nor forsake us. Nothing can separate us from his love. So if we believe that, we have to be bold in our prayer and be fervent in our prayer. That we should pray without ceasing. And this is where I'm getting ready to take you. That he doesn't want anyone to perish. But when he knocks at your door to come in the fellowship with you, do you hear him? Is your heart so hardened because you've so embraced the doctrines of devils that you don't even hear him anymore telling you to come out of her and be ye separate? Verse 19. It says, as many as, this is Christ speaking, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, heed it, therefore, and repent. <laughs> Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door of your heart, he's saying, I will come in because you are the house. You are a house. You, 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 can, you can house evil or you can house the spirit of the living God. It says, I come in to, you, to him and will suck with him and he with me. To him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that has an heir, let him hear what the Spirit, the Holy Spirit says unto the churches. I'm, Christ is standing at the door of your heart, your house, knocking, asking you to let him in so he can come and fellowship with you, sup with you, commune with you, shine a light through you to be an example of holiness and righteousness in the earth, he start off by saying you have to repent and you have to be zealous, which is the definition for fervent prayers. You have to be fervent, not lukewarm. He said if you lukewarm, he's going to spew you or vomit you out of his mouth. No one too much wants to hear these types of teaching anymore. Because everything is about how you can be rich, how you can be successful. But your life is but a vapor. You're only going to be in this flesh, in this tent for a limited period of time. But eternity is forever. And how you live in this tent is going to determine how you spend your eternity. And with that... In mind, like I said in last week, and Peter says, understanding all of these things, what kind of person are you ought to be? How should you live? The Holy Spirit has me saying uh, the same thing, and this is usually how He uses me: is that I say the same thing over and over again in different ways, in order to try to reach different people at different places in their walk with the Most High. 